Now, working on Guy's Grocery Games, I see some amazing foods. I mean, amazing foods and chefs coming in and using them in amazing ways. And one of my favorites, hang on, one of my favorites is jackfruit. Oh yeah, this fantastic meat substitute, it's blowing up on menus all over the country. And today, that's what we're gonna make is a barbecue jackfruit empanada. All right, so this crazy jackfruit. Now, I have a jackfruit in a can, and this is most of the ways you're gonna find it, okay? And what we're going to make is gonna blow your mind. You can use it in sandwiches, you can use it in tacos. This is your pulled pork substitute, and do you know how many times I've made these for people and given it to them, and they haven't had an idea what's going on, and then when I tell them it's jackfruit, they're like, no way. So I want you to try the same thing at home, okay? Let's get into it real quick. We're gonna make two things. One, we're gonna make this fantastic red bell pepper aioli, okay? If you don't want to get into this process of making the aioli, you can just take this, roast it up, and then uh, hit it into some mayonnaise. But I got a little bit of time, so I'm going to do it. Got the oil going. We're going to fry the empanadas. You know, everybody, every culture has their empanada-ish type dish, okay? Uh, be it a wonton or be a gyoza or be it a, a samosa. Everybody's got one. This empanada with this jackfruit, because of the way that it's gonna be hidden inside of the dough, and I'm not making the dough, we're just gonna buy the dough. I, let's make it easy. They're not gonna be able to tell. Oh, you're gonna love this. Okay, get into an onion. Here's what it is, jackfruit. When it's in the can, you kind of typically know it's gonna get a little soft. So to keep some texture to it, or to add some texture to it, I should say, we're going to throw it into the oven once we get it sauteed. All right. All right, some heat on that pan. So half of the onion is going for the empanada. Half is going for the red bell pepper aioli. And I just want to show you how fast and easy this all comes together. Okay. A little bit in there. Pull that cutting board right over the edge of the counter like that, and then you can just sweep it in. But remember, if you ever do it with your knife, use that back side of your knife. This noise is just dulling the knife. This noise is getting it in the pan, okay? Touch of some salt, help with the caramelization. The onion, touch of some salt as well, and a little bit of garlic. Actually, a little bit of garlic for both. Let me show you one of my favorite ways to control the garlic. Take that clove just like that, give it a little press, okay? Now we flattened it out. Now it doesn't want to roll around or play weeble wobble with you. Okay, now you go ahead and give it a quick little cut, and it's good to go. In this situation, if you want to take it a step further, you can give it a little press, and then go ahead and give it a couple side slices. Now go ahead and cut through it, and it's even more broken down for you, okay? I'm not a big fan of the garlic press. I think it turns the garlic inside out. This right here, I think you'll get a little bit more garlic flavor and a little less harsh garlic flavor. Not showing off, just try not to let it burn. Okay, just a touch of garlic into this and a little bit of garlic in to the uh, red bell pepper for the aioli. Okay, now let's look at this jackfruit. Now this jackfruit is a monster. A good place to find this Asian markets. A lot of specialty markets will have it. This right here being canned, I'm not too scared of it because I know exactly what it's gonna taste like and most of the time people have had it, they've had it from the can. So it's been drained out, most of the moisture was at least. Get two of these in here. And I know you're doing the exact same thing I did the first time my sister told me about this. I said, yeah, exactly, gonna taste just like pulled pork, can't wait. You'd be amazed at how many times even I've been biting into it and I'm like, this jackfruit? Okay, this can just cool down a little bit, turn off the heat. This needs to just cook down just a little bit. I'm gonna add a touch of water, okay? Then I'm gonna give it a little mash, toss it with a little barbecue sauce, and throw it in the oven. Just needs a few minutes. So, take a look at this. So now we've got this jackfruit, and it's really had a chance with a little bit of that water. It starts to break down. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a mash. What I want you to do 
is just take this potato masher or the back of a wooden spoon or the back of a spatula and just give it a little pressure because I want you to leave some texture and some size. I hate the word, but I want you to leave some chunks. Not my favorite culinary word, but you can see how it's almost starting to look like pulled pork. Now, right now, it's got a little bit of brininess to it from being in the can. So we're gonna sit here and saute this, but what we are gonna do is let it go into the oven and dry out. All right, there we go. Now, I recommend using your favorite barbecue sauce. Oh, it's mine. How coincidental, that's very fun. Little bit of barbecue sauce, not too much. Sheet tray, pulled pork, not over sauced. Pulled pork looking, I should say. 350 degree oven. There's a little bit of oil on that jackfruit, so I'm not too worried about it sticking. But even if it does stick, scraping it off with a spatula, it's gonna even build more of that texture. I'm gonna thin this out a little bit so we can dry. We'll pop it in the oven. This is gonna need 20 minutes. All right, the jackfruit should be dried out, ready to go. In the oven, 20, 25 minutes, starts to dry a little bit. And ladies and gentlemen, you start stepping right into pulled pork. It's gonna get cooked a little bit more, so it still has a little bit of a brininess to it, but the textural piece, when it dries in the chew that you get, huh, we'll let this uh, cool down before we put it in the empanadas. Okay, we're gonna make a little aioli. Drop this in. A little touch of some mustard, keep everybody together. Crack black pepper. Get some yolks here. I think when you're making something like a dipping sauce and you can make this aioli from scratch and this is how fast we're making it, just go ahead and do it. One, it makes everybody feel like you're really doing something special. But two, there's just a different flavor. I don't know, I don't, maybe it's because canned or jarred mayonnaise has stabilizers and so forth in it, but this just seems really the way to make it really next level. Okay. Touch of some salt. I've got the acid in there from the uh, from the mustard, so I'm in pretty good shape with that. A little vinegar to it. This has to brighten up a little bit. It's a little sweet. So that roasted pepper, the roasted onions, of course, makes it sweet. That's what I wanted. Oh, it'll be dynamite. Compliments and pairs up perfectly with the barbecue sauce. All right, so this is out of the way. Let's talk about empanadas. This is, well, this is an empanada dough. Just like you would buy a wonton skin or an egg roll skin, you keep them moist, don't let them dry out, don't let them get next to heat, and do not put hot stuff inside of them. So hopefully we have calmed down here enough. Yeah, this is cool enough. Okay, so what I have is a wet, damp towel here. Kept these wrapped up, keep them from getting uh, dried out. And if you put something hot on them, it's gonna burn right through them. So the key is to get it in fast, keep them covered. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more barbecue sauce. I wanted it to dry out. I didn't want the barbecue sauce to get in the way of that process. Lightly done, okay. A little bit of the filling right into the dough. Got some good texture in there. Now, a little touch of water. That's what we're gonna seal it with. Don't do too many of them at a time. The key here, ladies and gentlemen, when you're at home doing this, is to make sure that we get the air out of it and to make sure that we get a good seal. If you get too much filling in there and you can't close it properly, like see if I start to get the filling between the two edges, that's when it's gonna have a chance to explode on you, and when that explodes in your oil, oh, we got a problem. I'm gonna crimp this a little bit with a fork, and this is just to really make sure that it locks it down. There you go. 
Barbecued jackfruit empanada. Oils at 350. Fry these off. There we go. What are you doing, Smokey Dogs? You come check things out? Okay. These bad boys are done. Nice and golden brown. Okay. Now, look at this. The great thing about empanadas, you can stuff them with anything. I did this with jackfruit. One, because I love to see the vegetarian alternatives that are out there. And I don't even like to think about them as actually as alternatives. I just like to look at things that we can do that we haven't been doing that offer us great flavor and kind of surprise my friends and my family. And, uh, and I learned a lot of this. I'm telling you something. I pay attention. I listen just like you do. So here's a great way to do it. Take this empanada. Let's give it a little cut. Come on. Look at that. Pulled pork? I think so. Don't say anything. Just put it on the platter. Lay these up here. Give a little drizzle of uh, some barbecue sauce. Of course, I might have a favorite. I don't know. There you go. A little bit of the roasted red bell pepper aioli done with the onions and the garlic. Awesome. You gotta make sure that you let that dry out a little bit. It'll uh, bring even more texture. Little tang of the barbecue sauce. Nice chew of the jackfruit inside, that canned jackfruit. Nice, light, flaky empanada dough. Cooked at the right temperature, not oily. I'm blowing you up. That's the go-to recipe. I'm glad you looked this up. I'm glad you're watching it. You take this, make those empanadas, get that jackfruit, make extra, build some burritos, build some, build some taquitos, whatever it may be, but this is a go-to. You guys are gonna love it. I'll see you later. Catch you next week.